around. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you today. Whoops, forgot to turn my light on. Oh, there we go. That's a little brighter. Good morning. Hi, Janet. Good morning. Good to have you here today. Um, Flo and Steve, I see you're on. Good to see you too. Janet, did you have a good time at High Point yesterday? Ribbon and Stitch Yarn, good to have you too. I'm not sure I recognize your name. If you'd type your name in all caps and let me know where you're from, I would love to um, see check you out on Facebook or on your website. Um, good thing, did you find anything exciting out there at High Point? Olivia from Chicago, excellent, very good. Okay, Janet, you're hitting day two, and I see Connie, you're on. Good to have you on here as well. Um, <laughs> she says you bought too much. Okay, I will. I will tell you that my um, my CFO trainer um, says when you've bought too much, you need to just leave the market. <laughs> Good advice. Um, and you're friends with Sue Monheit. She's an excellent. I love Sue. She is awesome. So we're going to get started right away here today because I actually have a meeting that I am running to. So let me get Facebook Live started here. We'll just count this one down. Uh, there we go, three, two, we like punishment. <laughs> yes, I know, but there's always something around that corner. So good morning. Um, if you're joining me here today for the first time, thank you so much. I love to uh, talk to you each and every day about one of the things that I am most passionate about, and that is just small business. I think it is the backbone of our country. If you don't know me, my name is Vicki Adrian. I'm a long time retailer for over 33 years now in the little town of Bueller, Kansas. I absolutely love what I am privileged to do, and that is to uh, lead, a, lead a team of wonderful ladies who um, who we just have a, this little store that's a, a, a destination shopping place and so we talk about small business things you can do to take your business forward here so we are here we go we're gonna get going um, so these are um, three important productivity hacks that I think um, any of us on here can definitely do today so I recently listened to an episode of one of my favorite podcasters and it is the This Is Your Life podcast with Michael Hyatt, and he was talking about productivity hacks. And although uh, the episode was actually geared a little bit more towards online business, I thought several of his ideas translated really well for those of us in the brick and mortar world as well. So finding the players for your team is one of the most important places to start, but we're going to save that one for another episode. So a hand-picked team just makes a huge difference because the more that you can focus on your unique ability, the more productive you are going to be. So uh, when, I'm, when I'm trying to do something that I'm not particularly good at or I'm not that passionate about, um, I'm just as slow as the next person. So I'm not productive and I'm not effective and I'm not efficient. So if you can hire people to do those things, and they don't have to be full-time positions either, um, it, it frees us up to do work that we absolutely love, that fuels us, and that um, makes a difference in our, in our lives. So Michael says this about productivity. To me, it's, it's not so much about being more productive. It's about creating more margin or more space for the things that are truly the most important. So um, I think there are some people who just want to be more productive so they can do more, but their workload never shrinks. They're taking work home with them because they're still trying to be productive. Um, they're trying to do more, and that's just not the kind of life um, that I want. I want a life that has time for the things that matter most, including the people that I love the most and the things that I love to do the most. And the only way I've figured out to do that is to be more productive at work so I have more time to spend on these other things. And I thought that was just a great way to phrase that because truly as a small business owner or an entrepreneur, 
um, you never run out of things to do. It is um, the important thing is to to create your list so that you get the most important things done, the thing that things that move your business forward. So here are three takeaways that I thought were important for our listeners. So number one, and oh, this is a tough one uh, for a lot of the ladies that are on, I think. So eliminate online distractions. So we love the internet. We live in such an amazing time when just everything is right here at our fingertips. We have access to so much information, so much news, so many connections, uh, but can, it can also be a huge problem. It can be an enormous distraction and it can keep us from doing the things that we ought to be doing because you might just go over to Facebook for just a minute and you're just going to check your news feed and uh, somebody posted an interesting article and you click on that. Pretty soon you're down a rabbit hole and you just can't get out of it. So um, some ideas that Michael had on that one is to put your phone in airplane mode or do not disturb or um, Michael recommended the app called Freedom um, which actually you can use on your computer and it will not allow you to go to certain places like Facebook or Twitter uh, for a set time period like if you need to get an hour's worth of work done it will not allow you to go to those places although it'll still allow you to do research and things on your computer so that is that app is called freedom I will try to post that later today on our Facebook page uh, another idea was to put on noise canceling headphones I thought that was a great idea because if you're working in an office in a retail space um, the headphones are an actual physical um, you know when your when your team member looks in here in the office and and wants to ask you a question if your headphones are on they know you're in the do not disturb mode the other thing is just close your door um, I use this as a message to my team members that I I have a glass door so that I can see what's happening in our store but if and the door is rarely closed but if the door is closed it really means I am in here trying to get the most important work done so uh, the other thing is have a team member take messages do not answer the phone yourself and then set certain times a day where you call people back it's rare that they need an answer for something this very minute and um, if they do they they are just probably gonna have to wait so number two and I love this one because um, I I use this so effectively schedule time alone um, and and uh, we schedule meetings with others we may even schedule one-on-one -on -one time with the people that report to us or friends or family members but um, what we're talking about here is what author Jason Fried calls the alone zone, which is time when it's just you doing your work. So schedule it on your calendar just like an appointment because it is an appointment. It is a commitment. If you're not doing that, you're not getting your work done. So when people, and Michael says this, when people ask me if you're available for a certain time, you can legit, legitimately say, oh I'm sorry I've got another commitment then how about this time then treat those commitments just as sacredly as if they were with someone who was outside of your company or with another team member so just do it I promise this will be something that will be life-changing for you block that time on your calendar call it whatever you want you can call it think time work time alone time whatever you want to call it so Michael ha says he has at least two think time blocks or time alone blocks on his calendar every week and those are commitments that he keeps to himself. Um, that is where you can really move the needle and get very productive. I personally try to get at least a minimum of one hour and a lot of times two um, hours of alone time in the office before anyone else arrives here at work. That, uh, many times that's the only productive time I have in my day. So schedule time in your day, not at night, um, but in your in your work day that you actually grab and say, this is the time that I'm actually going to get my work done so that I'm not dragging it home. I'm not going to let it encroach upon my family time, um, my time with my friends or hobbies or other things that are important to me. This is a key thing. 
Um, if you're watching Periscope, if you're a business owner or manager, you are committed. Um, not just everyone is out there doing that. So I know that our listeners today struggle with this issue. We are super high achievers and we feel like um, if we're not working all the time, um, that we're somehow falling short. Well, that is couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, we want to work hard. We want to be very productive. but. The reason we're doing that is so that we can have a life outside of our business. We are, let's see, what are the right words for this? Um, it's not who you, oh, I'm going to mess it up. I'm, I'll, I'll research that and bring it to you on Facebook or tomorrow. <laughs> so I think that people uh, that I know, um, some of the high level people like in our mastermind group, they do schedule time alone. They do work alone a lot. And so I think this uh, is evidence that is so important. Number three, and this is our final one for today. Uh, this was right up my alley and I was so glad to see Michael Hyatt talk about it. Batch similar tasks together. If you follow me regularly here on the Remarkable Retailer episodes, you know that I'm a huge proponent of this one. I have my week set up so that I do financials on Monday email and social media on Tuesday. I do um, work with other small business owners and I set a time um, time to read and continue to learn things on Wednesdays. And then Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays are more out on the floor on in our retail store. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that I'm in the office all day every day. That is not what it means. It means that my productive, my productive time the time that I spend working on getting my most important work done is divided into those segments. So um, Michael's business is completely different from mine, yet he uses a very similar plan. So he encouraged you to write down a plan where you set up your ideal work week. Um, in other words, if you had a 100% control of your time, how would you organize all 168 hours of each week that you have? and uh, what would be your most important activities. So um, he batches his work so that for him, Mondays is his internal team meetings. So things that are going on with his staff right in his business. Um, he also records his podcasts on Mondays and he batches those as well. He'll record two or three or four podcasts in a row so that the next Monday he doesn't have that waiting for him. Um, he also says that Friday is his day for external meetings and I thought this was a gem. Um, he says, I used to take all external meetings th all throughout the week and it just kept m goofing up my weeks. He said I'd be trying to be in a creative mode writing and then I'd have to go to a lunch appointment or someone would have um, need him to go somewhere. So he said it was just too much back and forth and he found if he batched things together, he really was able to get in the groove of work and just to just get very efficient. So for him now, Fridays are the only days that he has external meetings. And so where he actually leaves his office and goes and has meetings with someone. And he said, it, you know, many times it, it's just back to back meetings on Fridays. So if somebody who's outside of my company wants to meet with me, it has to happen on a Friday. Um, and not everyone will have the freedom to do that and he understands that. But it, it then leaves times for me to do my most important, best work. So um, the way that I think about that is, you know, if it's possible to have, I spend very little time with sales reps here in my store because I, I feel like it is not productive use of my time most of the time um, because I do all of that at market. Um, but if you are going to meet with someone, just set a certain day of the week and that's the day that you have meetings. It, I think it really will clear th some things up and I hope to adopt this as well. So how about you? Have you outlined your ideal work week? If you haven't, maybe spend a few, um, maybe spend 30 minutes or so and just jot it down. Of course, this can always change. But what is your most important work and where are you allowing time in your schedule to get that done? So are you sticking to that schedule then or are you sitting in the office chasing down uh, the latest Facebook post that has gone viral? Um, so by creating a plan and then sticking to it, it will definitely make you more productive and it will give you time to do those most important things that are on your list. So your family or your health or um, 
your life. Uh, we are in business to, um, to allow us to have a life. And uh, when we don't spend our time wisely, it encroaches on that most important family time or personal time. Um, and so that is what I've got for you today. I so am so thankful that you've joined me. Um, and uh, I'm going to say goodbye to our Facebook people. And I'll be right back to Periscope. Thank you uh, for those of you that joined me on Facebook. We're going to say goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, and for our Periscope people, I am so thankful you joined me today. Do you have any comments or suggestions or ideas? Uh, we're going to take that guy off. Um, for running your own small business, or what are you struggling with? I think as I talk to people, just that productivity that, that you're feeling overwhelmed all the time. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining me too today. Um, I can't read. Sorry, I need uh, stronger glasses. Um, but thank you for that sweet comment. But um, again, it is just so important um, that we work on our business, that we're efficient while we're there so that we can go off and have another life. I know uh, one of the retailers that I was talking to talked about the fact that, you know, her husband just um, thinks she works way too hard. And I know she does. She works incredibly hard. And um, he wants her to be spending more time with the family. And I think that if we organize ourselves, we organize our life. And um, okay, you're okay. Good thing to address. I'm a new retailer and I'm the only one in the store. Okay, so I do have some ideas for you. Number one, you need to come in an hour before your store opens, at least. That is going to be your most productive time of the day. The other thing is, if you go ahead and, and put some ideas on paper for where you're going to spend your time throughout the week, as you're working in between customers in the store, you'll be able to jump right back into that. So, you know, if, and you certainly don't have to follow my model, but um, it, it just does work for me and for some other people. But, you know, Mondays, use that as your financial day. So in between customers, you can be checking your bank statements. You can be checking your credit cards to make sure your all the charges are correct. You can be looking at your open to buy. That's also the day that I place orders. Um, so I'm working with just that. So on Mondays, thank, thank you, I love your model. So on Mondays, I'm not making Facebook posts. I am not um, rearranging things in the store in between people you are sticking to that financial plan. And believe me, that will fill your day because as the owner of the business, that is the number one thing. You are responsible for your bottom line, whether you have staff members or not. The other thing I would encourage you to do is look at where you're weakest. Um, you know, we're all gifted in certain things. Um, and I, I remind me of what kind of store you have. Just pop that back on there if you're still on. So there are things that we are naturally really good at. You sell yarn. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming you're a very creative person. Um, because I don't know you yet, I'm going to say maybe your weakest thing is your finances. So maybe you hire someone for one hour a week to come in and organize and pay your bills. Make sure those are done on time every week. Um, or another area that might be weak for you, maybe it's social media, that you could have someone come in, just very limited time, but it frees you to do what you do best, which is probably, I am going to guess, um, working with your customers, um, working out on the floor. Um, the other thing is you might, you might set up like some little groups, and you may have this done already, but people that are, you know, knitting groups or um, crochet or what, whatever, that is not my area of expertise. Um, and so some of those ladies could actually be um, kind of on your floor and, and help you as they're, as they're knitting there together. I know there was a yarn store here in our area that also had a coffee bar that was just fabulous. And so um, even though I didn't knit, I love to be around. I love looking at all the pretty colors. But I would sit and have a cup of coffee and visit with some of the ladies while, they're, um, while they were knitting. So um, it, you can always reach out to me. I'm always glad to talk with you. Um, you can email me at vicki at remarkableretailer.com. 
you can always go to our uh, website, remarkableretailer.com, and you can catch old episodes of the um, Periscope episodes over on vimeo.com slash Vicki Adrian. And uh, good to have you all here today. I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And I think we'll be talking about, thank you. I, I would love to visit with you offline here. What is, type in your first name so I'll recognize it. Um, but again, I would, um, I will look forward, Olivia. Okay, Olivia, I'll be glad to talk with you later. Um, just, I hope you have a very good productive day. And remember, get that most important work done so that you can um, have more time with your family. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.